Welcome to another edition of the Healthcare Executive Talks podcast series, a presentation of Healthcare Executive Exchange magazine. We're located at healthcareix.com. Today's conversation is with Dr. Deepak Kapoor, President of Advanced Urology Centers of New York. This is part two of a three-part conversation on how advanced urology incorporated patient satisfaction into its corporate culture. This time around, we'll hear about the results from the Press Ganey study that we began discussing in our last installment. We'll also explore how Dr. Kapoor developed a pioneering approach to mathematically analyzing patient satisfaction. So what we did with them is that we went through what the CGCAP survey was. And now at that point in time when we started doing this, which was around 2011, I guess, 2000. Late 2011, we decided we were going to start doing this. So when we started doing this, um, Medicare hadn't let us know how they were going to be evaluating physicians yet. So we were kind of flying a little blind. But we took a standardized, uh, which means statistically valid, uh, Prescani thing, and then we customized it by getting rid of items that were not relevant to our practice. And um, and so uh, subsequently – uh, what we did for the first quarter is we just kind of piloted it. We wanted to see what would happen, and we created kind of a staged thing. So the first quarter we collected baseline data on, um, on all our doctors in terms of their percentile scores, and what we used as a proxy for, patient sat- for overall patient satisfaction was the patient's likelihood to refer another patient to our practice. So there's right. an ample body of literature that says that, you know, uh, the happiest patient is the one that sends you – a friend or a relative, you know, and right. you can kind of use that one cardinal indicator. Now, I'll tell you, we got a lot of pushback from our doctors, you know, and I'll tell you exactly what it was, you know. Point number one, you know, the busier doctors are, are always going to do worse than the um, than the slower doctors because they have more time to spend time with their patients and they can hold hands and their patients are going to be happier, so it's going to disadvantage our busier providers, okay? That was one that right. was repeatedly. Number two, you know, um, patients, it's not in my, the doctor's control. You know, patients care about things like how big is the parking lot and was the receptionist nice and how, le- how long are they waiting for appointments. And some of those things we can't always control as surgeons. If you have an emergency or this or that, you know, it's, uh, it's not going to be um, – uh, it's not going to be accurate and it's going to – you know, and there's nothing we're going to be able to do about it. Right. Number three was – that, you know, the only people that are ever going to write back are the people that are unhappy. My happy patients are going to come back, and they're not going to be say anything, but the unhappy patients are the ones that are going to write back in droves, and, and uh, so my scores are going to be artificially depressed because only unhappy people are going to write me back. And those were the three big um, criticisms that we heard. So what we did was actually created um, control parameters having to do with things like wait time, number of patients seen, and some of these other, um, and we broke the parameters into three different broad groups. We had 20-some-odd questions that we asked, and we broke them into three different categories. One I classified as logistical kind of things, which are things that had to do with before the patient got through the receptionist. So how long, how hard was it to call? How hard was it to schedule? Uh, how easy or difficult was it to schedule an appointment? Was the receptionist nice to you? How was the parking? You know, bah, 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 bah. all those things that we historically as providers have been told that patients really care a lot about based on the data that exists because all the data that has really been published or a good portion of it, it revolves around ER visits and visits to primary care physicians. There's actually right. there was, there's not one study in the literature about patient satisfaction in urology offices, not one. Interesting. And, uh, so, uh, and then the second thing we looked at is like uh, uh, we grouped things together for after you started your appointment, but before you saw the doctor, okay, how clean was the office? What was the, what was the medical assistant like? You know, all the various interactions you had with the staff that were not related to the interaction with the doctor. And then the third group of questions we clustered together was the, uh, was the relationship that people had with their physician. How was uh, their, their one-on-one interaction with the, uh, with the doctor? And we, and we grouped them together into, into three different categories. And um, so what I did was I, we got all these percentile scores, and I said, you know, I want to create something that's meaningful for my doctors. I want to create something. Not only do I want to tell them what is driving the satisfaction, I want to give them specifics on what they can do 
to, to change it. So we got the results, and after we got the first set of results, we saw that statistical analysis of our response rate was very high. So we had about a uh, uh, we were sending the response the the questionnaires to people in a blinded fashion. As, as mailings that we would send to their house after the visit, and mm-hmm. they would fill it back at their own leisure. And we had a statistically valid sample, and what we found was we were getting back a response rate of about 29%. And, um, and 29% put us in the top 8% of all of Press Ganey's clients in terms of response rate. Uh, and, and so then what I did was, and I created a correlation matrix. Are you familiar with a, a Pearson product moment correlation score? Well, a Pearson uh, score uh, is um, is a mathematical way to to correlate two variables against each other. Okay. 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 And so, um, and the score is generated be, uh, with uh, from a range of negative one to positive one. With negative one meaning that there's an absolute inverse correlation, meaning that if something goes up, the other thing goes down. Positive one meaning that the two things go up or down together, and zero meaning that there's no correlation. And then you can have a score anywhere in between there. So what I did was I created this this matrix, this correlation matrix, that evaluated every score against every other score. And then mm-hmm. created, and it's a standard mathematical technique. It's just not one that anybody had ever done with patients. It's actually never been done with patient satisfaction scores before. And so, what we, you know, and the best way that you could think about it, have you ever seen um, uh, one of those before we had MapQuest and Google? You would go and <laughs> um, uh, in like these AAA books, and it would yes. give you like a chart of driving distances. Right. So yeah. It would have a list of cities going across the top, and a mirror image list of cities going down the side, right? And right. then you could just kind of look across, and you could see, you know, index one thing against um, every – you could look at for one city up against every other city, and obviously on a diagonal where each city matched with each other, there would be a blank. Do you, you remember that? Yes, I remember it very well from when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's what that's basically what the, the the correlation matrix looked like. So on the top, it had all 20 of the questions or 26 of the questions that we had, and on the side, it had all 26 of the questions coming uh, coming down the side. And we had um, and we created this. Uh, and inside, there was a correlation score that correlated every variable against every other variable. Okay. Okay. And and what we found was utterly breathtaking, okay, Hmm. that in the specialist office, the patients, the thing that correlated the weakest with patient satisfaction, with likelihood to refer, was their logistical experience, you know? Wow. They didn't care. It, It was a very weak correlation. The strongest correlation by far, every parameter, was the direct face to face interaction with the doctor. Okay, and the single parameter that made the biggest difference was how much confidence did the patient have in the doctor. And you could say, well, okay, you know what? What does that mean? How much confidence? Yeah, all right. If you're confident in your doctor, you're likely to send another patient. That makes sense. Okay, but did you learn anything from that? I said, all right. Well, you know what? Let's go back to the scale. So we looked at the scale across um, confidence in the caregiver. And we said, what, is this, what did that correlate to, to the highest degree? And the answer was, did the doctor answer my questions? Hmm. Fascinating. Okay. Did the doctor answer my questions? Okay. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, there was no correlation between the number of patients. In fact, there was a slightly negative correlation that the busier doctors tended to have higher scores than the slower doctors. So that, that, uh, that myth that people had, that anxiety, that, uh, that the busier doctors are going to be disadvantaged, completely busted. You know, like wow, myth that's busted. Wow, that's totally that's untrue. Okay? Huh? And, you know, at this point in time, we've collected data on uh, – we've sent out over, uh, over 200,000 surveys and have almost 60,000 responses. Okay? Wow. So we're talking about a vast database. No relationship whatsoever between um, the number of patients seen and patient satisfaction. Number two, no relation whatsoever between the percentage response rate and the likelihood to refer. 
So it's not true that only your unhappy patients tend to write back. In fact, it tended to correlate slightly positively. It seems that actually your happy patients are more likely to respond to you than your unhappy patients are, not what people expected, you know. Yeah. And number three, that the physician is saying that they couldn't change it, we were able to then create for every doctor, based on this correlation matrix, specifically what they needed to change in their practice. Okay? Yeah. We were yeah. able to create a specific, not go to a doctor and say, hey, you know, Dr. Joe Blow, your patient satisfaction scores suck. You know, get on the stick here. You know, make your patient <laughs> happy. You know, but we were able to walk in. And, um, and the other thing that we found that was interesting is that there was almost no correlation whatsoever between waiting time in the office and patient satisfaction, provided you gave the patient information about delays. So, in other words, if you were running late in the office and you stuck your head out to the waiting room and said, hey, guys, I'm sorry, I had an emergency. I'm running 20 minutes late. Please bear with me. That's all they needed. It was a question of, of creating a set of expectations and then, um, and then meeting those, um, those expectations. And, that if you, uh, and if you empowered the patient, if you gave them some information, they were very positive. So let me give you a for example. We had this one, uh, one of my doctors whose patient satisfaction stories were in the bottom quartile in the, uh, in the country. So he was scoring in like the 22nd, 23rd percentile. So meaning 75% of doctors, 80% of doctors in the country were doing better than he was. His scores were pitiful. And, um, and his uh, did the doctor answer my question score was very, very low. So mm -hmm. what we did for his office is, um, is he, he tried for uh, – and so the way we set up the workflow is we got baseline data the first time. Mm -hmm. The second quarter – we shared, and we didn't share that information with the doctors. We just, we just did some internal processing to get some baseline data. The second quarter, we got the data, and we shared it with the physicians, and we provided them with certain tools, uh, you know, with the, based on our, our analysis, based on certain objective measures. And then in the third quarter, we shared their patient satisfaction scores across everybody. So every doctor knows how every other doctor is doing. And we made it public. So that, uh, so that when you're up there, you get a thing of where you rank with, against all your other peers. And one thing about surgeons, well, physicians in general, and surgeons in particular, is that we're a very, very competitive group, and nobody likes to be an outlier on the bottom. Nobody, right, right, right. You know? and, so, um, and so starting next year, we're going to be linking compensation to it. But, the, um, uh, but And so this guy that, whose scores were low, and he, he was really upset about it. You know, he felt really bad. And we said, okay, look. Randy, who you spoke to, is the one that goes out into the offices and does this training. Mm -hmm. So what she came up with, uh, and she just said, you know, Dr. Kapoor, the workflows in the office, there's so many problems, blah, blah, blah. And I said, so I said, Randy, let's just think of one thing that we can do to empower his patients, to make him feel. So what we did was we, we made up these little plastic cards that had a, a white card with a red question mark on them, okay? And what, we, what the medical assistant did was they gave the plastic card to the patient, and, they, and we told them that the visit isn't over until you give the card back to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and you, you give the card back to the doctor when he has answered all your questions. Right. Okay? And within one quarter, his press gainies went from the bottom quartile in the country to the top quartile in the country. With that one workflow change that his patients felt before that he was rushed and he wasn't answering their questions, and when you empowered the patient, and, you know, and what's happened is every single physician that has gone through the training program, that, has, um, that we've identified, the thing, their scores have gone up. And, in fact, we've gone in our own scores for having, seeing that maybe 17 or 18 percent of our doctors were in the bottom quartile to mm -hmm. now about 60 percent of our doctors are in the top quartile after a year's worth of working on it. And that concludes another edition of the Healthcare Executive Talks podcast series. That conversation was part two in a three-part discussion with Dr. Deepak Kapoor, president of Advanced Urology Centers of New York. In our third installment, Dr. Kapoor will share his thoughts and insights on why patient satisfaction is so important in today's healthcare culture. For more information on Advanced Urology Centers, please visit their website at AUCofNY.com. That's AUC 
O-F-N-Y dot com. The Healthcare Executive Talks podcast series is a presentation of Healthcare Executive Exchange magazine. For our latest podcast and articles, please visit our website at healthcareix.com. You can also download our podcast on iTunes. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter for updates on the healthcare news of the day. Our Twitter handle is the at sign H-C-I-X. That's at H-C-I-X. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, be well.